Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're going to be hopping on some buses and trying to make it across town in Get On Board. Get On Board New York and London here is a reprinting of uh, Let's Make a Bus Route, which is a game I very much enjoy. It's a flip and write style game. You'll be revealing cards, drawing a line where your bus is supposed to be around the board, collecting uh, bonuses and things like that, picking people up, dropping them off where they want to go, that sort of thing. So this reprint here uh, kind of gets rid of the drawing on the board map part. It, it has instead wooden pieces that will go out on the board, but it's still basically a flip and right because you still have a player board where you'll be making markings. I want to go ahead and show you how the game works, give you a little quick overview of it. We'll come on back, I'll tell you what I think of it, and uh, if you happen to know the original one, then mention a couple of small differences between them as well. So here we've got a game for four players already in progress. I'm going to show you basically what the general flow is and what we are trying to do. So everybody has one of these sheets, and you are going to be using that to load up characters, drop them off sometimes where they want to go, and generally score victory points, all right? We are going to, each round, reveal one of these cards up here, flipping that over. Everybody has on their board, on their sheet here, that ticket number. You will mark that off, and it tells you what kind of route you are building. It will show you. So, for example, my three and nine here, these orange ones, show me that I will put down two lengths of track and that they have to have a turn in between them. So not in a straight line, like these two are in a straight line, okay? So if I was going to do that, I'd check if I'm yellow, at the end of my line, which can never double back on itself, I would be here right now, so two lengths could go this way and then over one, or this way and then this way once, okay? And as you pass through these locations, you will, like I said, pick people up, drop them off. So, let's go through the board here fairly quickly. We have here the uh, the elderly ladies. As you pick them up, you will mark off the next spot, and very simply at the end of the game, you add up the sum of these spaces. The students here, as you pick them up, you'll mark them here. As you go through uh, schools, you will mark them here, and at the end, you'll score the multiplication between these two things. Put that right there. We've got here tourists. You will load them up, up to four, and then whenever you go through one of these tourist locations, either the light blue or the dark blue, and by that I mean these dark blue ones here, and the light blue ones, such as Piccadilly Circus right there, then you will drop them off and get victory points based on how many you've loaded. So right now I have two folks on there. If I go through either one of these kinds of locations, I will get five points, and I will write that right there, and I will immediately start loading people on the next line no matter if these were empty. In fact, you should cross them out if you never loaded folks into those. This is for the businessmen. You will do a very similar idea. Load up to three, drop them off when you go through these buildings, and they will give you points as well as a bonus. A, either another elderly, a tourist, or a student when you drop them off, okay? This space here is for bonus cards. These two bonus cards, the first player to have five of the elderly or go through three of these locations will get 10 victory points. Everybody who does it on that turn can take 10 victory points. And then from that point on, we'll flip that over and now it's only worth six victory points. And then lastly, this spot right here is going to be for your hidden bonus. You have a card at the beginning that shows you locations on the map. And if you can connect those three locations with your route, you're going to get 10 victory points. There's also this area up here that allows you to change what would be a turn into a straight or, or vice versa, and it'll cost you victory points as you do it. And then down here is an area for when you create traffic jams. So that is going to be uh, whenever you go on a line that other players have already crossed, you are going to be creating traffic that will subtract victory points. So I'm going to go ahead and take a turn. It is yellow's turn to begin. We go up here. We flip over one of these. It is 11. All right, so for yellow, 11 is a single tick. One single tick right here. So I am going to take just one of these. Right now, because of where I am, there are no side streets. Can't go through that part, can't connect here. So I only have a single option. I'm going to go right there. 
So I've arrived at one of these locations. Let's go ahead and flip that back over. I've arrived at that location. I'm going to drop off tourists there. So I have two of them. That means five points go right there. I'll cross this off. So I know I cannot, I cannot load anyone in there. And I'm also going to, because that's one of the two bonuses, I need to keep track of how many of them I've been through, I'm going to also mark off that I've been through one of them right there. Uh, and then that's it for me. And then blue would go. Now let's assume for blue this is their player board. You'll see that the sub bonuses here at the top, the, the, what, what the pattern is tied to the cards will be different. So for blue, it's two in a straight line, assuming this is their sheet, okay? So they'll take two, and those will go in a straight line. They end it right here, okay? Now, let's say instead, though, they wanted to put one there, and they wanted to not go in a direct line. Well, they could mark off one of these spaces on their own sheet and make a turn. They could go down here. That way you pick up one of these tourists. Now, if you end a turn, if blue had only, you know, they had been here, let's say, and they put out their two, they go one, two, they pick up a student. If you end at one of these traffic lights, you immediately get a bonus of one of these, which can go from any direction there when you get there, okay? So that's what the uh, traffic lights do. They also are where the players will start from. As you see, these starting pieces begin on some of these traffic lights, all right? Um, now the named locations, there's one of each color. When you go through them, you might earn some bonus points. All right, so that means uh, when somebody goes through King's College, as soon as you arrive there, you see how many students, that's the matching color, you've loaded up to that point, and you are going to get a, a number of bonus points written up here equal to however many students you've loaded. Same thing is true, for example, this one right here, City of London. You would do uh, as many workers of these businessmen as you, have, uh, as you have loaded ever, even if they already came off you're gonna get a bonus for that. So that's the general idea. Again, traffic, the way traffic works is, if the green player does something like this, they go here for one, they go here for one, and then they go here for their last one, they're now sharing a space with purple. That means they have created one traffic and you have to mark off the very first bus in this little line of buses down here. And they start accruing negative points. You'll be losing points for doing that too much. And in fact, if someone later on came along and put a third line there, well, you now have created two traffic. You have to mark off two of those, one per player already there. So that's the general idea in the game. You're gonna add up all of these different parts. You're gonna get a couple of end game bonuses for any folks that are still on the bus and, and didn't get a chance to come off. And then you figure out what your total is down here. And that's the game. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and show you very briefly here the other side of the board. So here we've got London, like I said, and it tells us up in the corner, this is for four or five players. If you want to play with only two or three players, then you are going to do that on the other side of this board. So here's the side with New York for two or three players. Smaller, more truncated, um, and then, of course, the, uh, the numbers where the players may start, which are these numbers by the traffic lights, on this side only go up to six. So fewer places in which to start. Other than that, pretty much the same idea on this side of the board. So there you go, folks. That is how we uh, play the game. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. I have Let's Make a Bus Route in my collection, and this printing of the game is still super fun. Uh, it's, it's a game that I find to be punchy. It's a quick playing game. There's not a lot of turns, so every turn is important. You're trying to achieve uh, you know, a variety of things and try to do the best in all these different areas, and uh, the game is, is kind of over before you know it, and then you add up your points. And So I just find that a very enjoyable experience. I'm going to be talking about this one specifically now for a little bit. I'll come back to that comparison. So, uh, starting from the top with the theme here, I think it's a lovely theme. It's bright. I think the form factor here uh, helps the theme uh, shine through. Um, and coupled into that theme, then we go right into aesthetics. And I, I love the style that they went with here. That sort of, you know, 1950s uh, 
cartoon style. They, they, they nailed that look. It's it's all over the box, of course, but then you can see that represented on the on the board, on the cards. There's a few nice touches. The tickets cards, the ones that denote your movement, have uh, punch holes on it, like a like a ticket for a bus would. So you know you have something like this with the little punch holes on it. That's a cute cute touch. It's a nice idea that works really well. So I like that. There's a couple of things I thought were a little weird when it came to the components and the aesthetics. The board has this white grid on it that is not the grid you're thinking of with the streets, like another sort of white grid laid on top of it, which is just distracting. I'm not sure why that was not removed from the graphics before the board was printed. Um, it doesn't achieve anything, it's not really there for any reason, it's sort of a, a not quite an eyesore, but it's, um, distracting. It, uh, there's no good reason for it to be there. Um, the two boards is also a little bit of a misnomer. This game has two boards. They're advertising New York and London, but they really they're different because of player count and not because they're offering you two boards that you can play on no matter what player count you've got, okay? So I wish that had been a little bit clo a little bit more clearly explained on the game box itself. It looks right now like you're getting two alternate boards. Kind of you're getting two alternate boards, right? Anyway, replay value. You have different goals. Um, you have a bunch of different little things you can choose to pursue. Make your secret connection. Go for those 10 point bonuses. Uh, who you pick up and where you drop them off, where you're earning your bonuses from, how to manage your, uh, you know, the ability to, to bend or break a rule, and you have a limited amount of times you can do that. I think that that all adds up to a nice amount of replayability in the game. The game arc itself is, as I mentioned earlier, very punchy. It's a, it's a quick, simple game to enjoy. It is one that um, always keeps you engaged because you can see the time pressure uh, being very apparent. There's simply not that many turns. Every one of those that goes by, you'll mark off your little ticket at the top of your player sheet and you can see how many you've got left and which, which ones you've got left. And uh, so you have to stay on top of it, always you know, going towards the thing you intend to make it to. I like that a lot. So I think the game arc is a great combination of short play time and a lot of interest in that short play time. The ease of play, also very very good, very simple. You, you'll have a little, a couple of steps at the beginning with uh, setup that denotes where you put your starting, uh, your starting piece. But then after that, you're off to the races. Flip a card, and in player order, put down your two little tracks, and that's it, right? Mark off who you loaded, who you unloaded. They did change a little bit the rules from the original Let's Make a Bus Route, um, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about some of those small changes here. Obviously, form factor changed a bit, but uh, you now have more granular bonuses for, for example, loading on either businessmen or tourists. If at the end of the game you have some loaded on that never made it to a stop where they would get off and get you points, you still score some points for those people. That was not a thing in the original game. So they're now rewarding you. It's, a, it's more forgiving, I suppose. You know, They've made a couple of changes to make the game a little more forgiving. They've also added this idea of special locations. You know, um, The named locations on the board, one of each color, and those will give you bonus points. So a few more places from which to mine one or two or three points to even out the curve. The, the sort of punishment from not making it somewhere or not quite completing a goal. I think I like those changes. Yeah, they take a little more explaining. You know, you have to teach a couple more rules. But I think they fold in very nicely. Uh, lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. The main tricky part here is knowing what to go for, certainly. But then also, uh, sort of pain management, right? Like, when do I use these abilities that cost me victory points at the end of the game? But I've got to use it because instead of going straight, I want to take a, a right turn here or a left turn. Um, when you're okay with creating traffic just to plow through some section instead of going around someone else. All of those things will ultimately cost you a few points. And one of the more fun strategic parts of the game is 
knowing when you go, okay, fine, mark this off, I'll lose two more victory points at the end of the game, but I'm achieving what I need to achieve right now. I like those things, you know. And the little combos, the way some areas affect other areas is also a nice thing to think about. So there you go. For me, this is the game I certainly recommend. If you are a fan of, you know, flip and write style games, um, I think you're going to like this one. But even if you're not necessarily a big fan of that, this one manages to not feel like many of those games feel. This feels, in many ways, like a, a board game in which scoring happens to require a pen or a pencil. So it's not quite the same vibe that I get from this game. And I like it as much as I like the original one, uh, the let's make a bus route printing of this. I think this one is a sharper looking game, ultimately. I think this is a very beautiful board. It's almost Christmassy too because of the, the colors they chose to go with here. Uh, so I certainly recommend it. This gets a you know a strong recommendation from me if you like the style of game. I'm going to give the same rating I give the original one, which is an 8 out of 10. That means it gets a seal of approval. I, um, I recommend you go ahead and get yourself a copy of this one because I don't think you're going to regret it. It's one that plays with many different kinds of gamers, you know, non-gamers, gamers. It's quick. It's going to move along at a nice clip and just be enjoyable. Nice form factor on this little box, too. So there you go, folks. That is Get On Board. 8 out of 10 from me. My name is Z Garcia. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one.